I rise to briefly speak in support of Senator Hu's amendment. He expressed arguments in favor of, such a, of this amendment in a very clear manner, and I thank him. I would like to add that, in my view, his proposals make even more sense today than at committee where it was defeated by a tie vote. Why? Because since the end of our committee study, many important developments have occurred that call for this amendment in addition to the valid arguments that Senator Hu raised at the committee and earlier tonight. I recognize I'm not an expert in agricultural finance. He is the expert, and I defer to it. And, uh, but I thought the arguments were quite convincing. First, on October 26, the Prime Minister announced a three-year exemption of the price on carbon for home heating oil. The, though it, it is often described as the Atlantic exemption, we know by now, thanks to Senator Ranget, that it will affect more households in Ontario and elsewhere in Canada than in the overall Atlantic provinces. Like I said in my third reading speech, I was rather puzzled by this announcement when it was made. Though, uh, sorry, uh, uh, that announcement. After some research, I do now understand that at current prices, it can cost four times more to generate the same amount of heat with oil as with natural gas, and that the price of oil, of oil uh, has increased significantly over the last few years, contrary to the price of natural gas that went down. Finally, this expensive source of energy is mostly used by low-income households. As Senator Ringett illustrated previously, this exemption is not targeted at one region. It is targeted at a group of people who are using a product where the price went through the roof over the years and who are unable financially to adopt an alternative without some assistance. It is also very important to remember that this is a three-year exemption and not one for eight years, and with the easy extensions we find in Bill C-234. As to the second development, since our committee study, the government has repeatedly said that they are not open to further exemptions to the price of on, the, on carbon. <coughs> the government all, has also reaffirmed its, its strong commitment to the policy of a price on carbon and to do whatever is necessary to meet Canada's undertaking under the Paris Agreement. We also know that the Bloc Québécois and the NDP share a commitment to Canada's climate plan and reject and ask the tax approach. This position does not exclude some exemptions to deal with the dire situations, if proven. Third, on November 6, the House of Commons defeated a conservative motion calling for an ex exemption for all home heating fuel. Senator Hu referred to it briefly. Why should we have a bill that provides an exemption for heating all kinds of, far of barns and farm buildings, including those farmers operating in supply management systems that guarantee them a good income while refusing a similar exemption for all home heating? I think it's a good question to ask. As I said at third reading, are cows and hogs more valuable than humans? Furthermore, will it be logical to adopt a bill that proposes exemptions for heating all kinds of barn or farm buildings for a minimum of eight years, while there is only one exemption currently, and it's for home, those using heating oil, and which is limited to three years. I don't see the logic between eight years for farm buildings, but three years for people that are, that are the, low, the, the poorest people in the country using that type of heating system. 
Fourth, last week, the House of Commons defeated another Conservative motion. That one was more or less ordering us to pass Bill C-234 C without amendment in the midst of our review. Conservative MP Adams stated just before entering the Conservative caucus, he said to the media that senators should go back to what they are good at, and I quote, which is being invisible, end of quote. Obviously, he ignores the new reality of this place. We don't intend to be invisible, sir, and we are ready to do our constitutional duty of sober second thought, though in, connect in connections with all kinds of bill, whether they are from the Conservative Party or the government. But we are also mindful of our role to propose amendments when we consider it appropriate while leaving the final say to the elected MPs. This is the proper functioning of Canada's parliament. To quote the late Senator Sugar, we are, no, we are very familiar with the fact that our role calls for some restraint. In the end, the return of Bill C-234 to the other place will invite all MPs including liberal and ministers, to revisit the issue of exemptions and put in place a coherent approach in matters of exemptions. Incidentally, this is also the goal of the motion tabled two, two days ago by our colleague Senator Belmar. In her speech on C-234, she urged all of us including the provinces, the federal government, and all stakeholders to act together in the, in the pursuit of solutions to the climate crisis. We can only go through that crisis, which is linked to our own survival by acting together and not by threatening not to implement laws that have been federally ad adopted by this parliament and to have states that are becoming road provinces, to have provinces that are becoming road states and refusing to implement laws that were constitutionally adopted. If we have the will and if we can work together as she suggested in her motions, then we can expect we will meet our undertakings under the Paris Accord and we will have a current policy in matter of strict price on carbon with exemptions designed to get release to those that are in absolute need of it with type of pro multi a, multi a multiplicity of programs put forward by the federal government and the provinces to assist everybody to do the green turn around because that's the only way we can do it I know some farmers need some assistance. I know they are prescribing all the programs that were put forward so far by Agriculture Canada. I know that they are willing to embrace the things because, as Senator Carter said, they are the steward of the land. And they want the land to survive. They want to survive and they want to keep helping us to eat and be properly fed. But we have all to work together, not trying to seek our, what? Well, how can I escape the burden of the others? We shall all be sharing the burden and we shall be all working together to work to achieve the goals. Thank you very much. Merci and Marcy.